2015 is the International Year of Light. We have communications entirely dependent on light. So from studying the physics of this, a whole industry has grown up and our whole way of life has changed. There are lots of different parts to the electromagnetic spectrum. There's the components that we can see, visible light. There's shorter wavelengths like X-rays and ultraviolet. And then there are longer wavelengths like microwaves and radio waves. And in between the visible light and the microwaves, uh, there's a region which we call terahertz radiation. It's part of the electromagnetic spectrum that is difficult to access. Um, the traditional part is between the microwave, so things you have for your mobile phones, to the optics that we have with lasers and sort of laser pointers. And it's just an exciting area that it bounds between the electronic way of looking at the world and the photonic way of looking at the world. If you want to study physics, terahertz is important. If you want to study medical sciences, um, terahertz is also very important because um, terahertz can uh, get you images just like an x-ray uh, but without damaging your tissues. So if you want to have, let's say, an image uh, of your, a fractured bone, uh, using terahertz radiation you can still see the fractured bone but the biological tissues wouldn't be damaged because they are uh, non-ionizing. So in terms of medical sciences, that those are important. Um, if you're talking about communication, you can get a thousand times boost in, uh, in the signal power, the, the frequencies, so they would be quite as powerful as well. So there are various applications which make terahertz a really exciting place to be and to do research in. This region where these, the optical and the electronic overlap, particularly interesting region for the study for the scientists. Well, the phrase the terahertz gap is used is because terahertz radiation is, has for a very long time been difficult to produce and difficult to detect. So we're, we're, we're very good at making um, uh, optical light sources, lasers, light bulbs, things like that. And we're also very good at making microwave sources, um, things like microwave uh, emitters for mobile phones or uh, other, other types of communications. Whereas in the terahertz region, it's, it's much harder to, to make these sources. And this has meant that not many people have used this terahertz region for most of the 20th century. Terahertz is a very difficult area of the electromagnetic spectrum to work in. The waves are far shorter than normal radio waves and yet they're far longer than the light waves that we can see. The technology is very difficult and so it's a challenge, a scientific challenge to solve. To solve that challenge in the Coherent Terahertz Systems uh, program, we've brought together researchers from Cambridge, from Leeds, from UCL. We've brought together physicists, electrical engineers, material scientists and by bringing all those talents together and learning from each other's expertise and each other's insights, we can solve the really difficult problem of making terahertz practical uh, for new applications, including vastly higher capacity communication systems, methods of manipulating atoms, so-called quantum computation processes, many new things that we couldn't devise just working as electrical engineers or physicists or material scientists alone. It's trying to bring together all of the different facets of wireless communication, imaging, spectroscopy and all the different ways that we can make terahertz and trying to make it an ability to actually make an application for them. So trying to make usable devices that hopefully in the future, in the near future, we can actually exploit. What we are trying to target now to build uh, very portable sources uh, and with uh, high um, efficiency sources, uh, which we can uh, drive with just a voltage, per se, and uh, generate the terahertz out of them. Um, so that's that's what we what we try to achieve now. So, uh, in a sense, to spread them, and then if we can provide the terahertz sources, people can start to research in number of applications for those sources. In terms of application, there is a wide amount uh, from uh, astronomical Earth observation, environmental monitoring, to biological applications, being able to look at cancerous tumors and so forth 
or just from as our experience fundamental physics associated with the way that we generate terahertz. And all this drive towards technology is going to enable us to address many applications ranging from very high data rate communication, sensing, imaging, um, quantum technology and even space application. Uh, the main problem you find here is that there's a lack of sources and detectors and that's where current technology can help. This is a great job in the fact that you're able to learn new things, apply that learning into developing new things and sometimes the best thing you can do is just be the first person to have ever seen anything ever and then seeing how that then, then, then develops. Well, and what's going to get you out of bed in the morning uh, for the next 10 or 20 years and uh, if that's doing really exciting experiments and having the chance to have a real kind of tangible impact on the world that you see around you then science and engineering is a great way to do this. One level of advice I would give anybody who would be interested or even thinking about going into science pick something you love, pick something that really interests you whether that's how you program a computer, how do you make a computer work, how do you make... I mean, I'm a material scientist engineer who works in a physics lab. There are such blurred boundaries. Um, so I know chemists who become biologists and biologists that become engineers. So all you need to do is follow something that you really enjoy. And that may change. In five years' time, you may not be interested in electronics, you may be interested in biology. So therefore, just do things that you are interested in. And if you do something you're interested in, it's something you love, you'll continue to do it day on day. I hope that the International Year of Light will encourage you to think about the world that we have about us, the many uses of light that we already have, and maybe invent some new ones which will make the next century beyond 2015 as different from 2015 as 2015 is from 1915. As you will have seen in this video, there is so much exciting research going on across the three universities that are part of the Coherent Terahertz Systems Research Programme. This research is going to make a real difference in uh, society. And we'd like to thank the UK's Engineering and Physical Sciences Research Council, the EPSRC, for their funding and for their support. We'd like to say also that we welcome school visits to our labs here to find out more about terahertz and the work going on. We want to inspire you to think about becoming an engineer. We need more engineers to carry out the terahertz research of the future. If you'd like to find out more details about the Coherent Terahertz Systems uh, Research Program and about the terahertz region of the spectrum, then please contact me at my email address at the end of this video. We'd very much like to send you a copy of this leaflet that we have produced, which gives you more information. Thanks very much for watching.